Tonight's beer is Steam Whistle Premium Pale Ale from Steam Whistle Brewing in Toronto. Yes, I realize it's not my usual style, but the name is a clue to what I'm doing tonight, so I thought it would be appropriate. So a few weeks ago, I was scrolling through Reddit, as you do, and I came across a post uh, with a, a guy had found something when he was helping clean out his friend's house, and he didn't know what it was, so he posted a picture, and... It turns out that it was almost exactly like that. This is, for those of you who aren't familiar with them, this is a model steam engine. A toy, if you will, but a working model. Now, my brother and I had this one here as a toy when we were kids. For years and years and years. This is a British made one. This is a German made one. But they they work essentially the same. Um, it, it's a steam engine. And yes, back in the 70s and earlier, kids played with fire and hot steam. You can still buy similar equipment, and I'll show you in a minute. But uh, I thought I'd just take a little side trip here and... Uh, break away from the ordinary and just play with these guys and re uh, relive a bit of my childhood. Some of you guys may never have seen something, some steam engines uh, in real life, these models anyways. Um, I know a lot of you are similar age to me, um, so you probably have had, but I'm betting there's some people who have never encountered things like this. So we'll go through them. So the basic principle of operation of a steam engine is you fill the boiler with water, you apply heat to the bottom of the boiler, in this case it's an alcohol burner, um, The in a real uh, locomotive or steam tractor or, or stationary engine, it would be wood or oil or coal or whatever the hell else you could find that would burn, but... Uh, Typically, the engines were designed for a specific fuel, but in a pinch, you could uh, you could use pretty much anything that would burn hot. So that creates steam, pressurized steam inside the boiler. Um, when that pressure gets high enough, the steam can push out here, out this little uh, pipe. Now, a, a locomotive or a, a full-size one will actually have a steam dome on top. With a, and to capture the steam above uh, the water so that you don't get actual water in there because, of course, water is not compressible. Steam, being a gas, is. So that comes out here and goes in through this faceplate towards the piston. Let me just pop that out. And on the back of the piston, you can see there's a little inlet hole there, which, when the piston is in that position, winds up with it. So that position is just before the top of the stroke. Let me just reconnect that. So that's basically anywhere from about there to about there. So as this is coming around, momentum on the flywheel pulls it along and it comes up. That valve, which is essentially what that is, uh, allows steam into the piston and that steam pushes the connecting rod that way. And as that happens, this piston flattens out. So now the, the uh, piston is no longer connected to that intake port. And as it goes past full stroke, it tilts up and it exhausts the steam there as momentum of the flywheel pushes it around. That's the most simple type of valve there's going to be. Since we're talking about the valves, might as well look at the model of... Uh, slightly more complex one. This is uh, more what you'd find on a locomotive or on a steam tractor or something like that. Um, so this is the piston here in the bottom half of the the valve chest, the steam chest, and it its shaft pushes on the connecting rods back to the wheels, um, just like the uh, the mo the other model the, the the shaft and the piston pushes on the on the flywheel, um, but then sliding along in this ch in this valve body up above here, you can see there's a couple of other rods as well, and those would be 
connected to various different uh, pieces of valve gear and whatnot and timed so that to open and close valves on the pistons uh, allowing steam to go on either side of the piston so you'd have a double acting piston so when the rod is in the front as it is right now it would be move, or the wheels would be going in this direction and as it gets just past dead center on the wheels so that the wheel the rod's going to be pushing back it's putting the the valves will be pushing the steam onto the front of the piston to push it that way if we go 180 degrees then the valve's going to switch over and push on the back of the piston that way so you get a double action there and then on the other side notice the wheels are 90 degrees off from that side so every 90 degrees uh, all the way around one or the other pistons is either pushing in that direction or in that in this direction or in that direction so you've got basically power at all four quadrants of the wheels rotation unfortunately as you can see this model is a work in progress and has been for quite some time uh, it's a conversion they started a long time ago and you may recognize it as the one that's normally sitting back behind there waiting for me to feel up to taking on this challenge which is way more than i was than i uh, originally thought it was going to be oh yeah i talked about the steam dome that's this guy right here so the steam from the boiler rises up i mean is that that though or that dome uh i think it's the front one i could be wrong but i think it's the front one so the steam rises up from the boiler into there and then is picked off up in there and goes down into the valve gear through that big pipe right there. And then in the model, it doesn't go down there because it's hidden in the shadows and it's not necessary for the function of the model anyway, but that's, that's what's going on. But that's enough theory. Let's fire this guy up. So we have a little pressure relief slash filler valve here. Notice a spring on the bottom. If the pressure gets too high inside the boiler, it will push that cap up off the little O-ring seal, preventing it from exploding in my face, which is always a good thing. So I'm just going to fill it with this. Normally they come with, uh, they came with a little funnel. I don't have that anymore. So I'm going to fill it up to about half to three quarters that's probably good enough for this demonstration i'll run that down tight then i'll fill up the alcohol burner i've just got some into a eyedropper bottle here um, i can't remember it used to say in the instruction pamphlet that came with it decades ago it was very specific what type of alcohol to use but realistically as long as it burns, I don't think it matters that much. So in that tray, there's some wicking material, basically to act like candle wick. Um, so that's uh, that's that. For those who are playing along at home, let's see now. There it lit. I don't know, can you see that? And sort of see the yellow flickers of flame occasionally. Let's put it in there and let that boiler start uh, warming up. We're getting close. Not quite enough to overcome all the friction yet, but we're getting close. You see that? There we go. I may have overfilled it. Remember I was talking about that steam dome and not wanting to get uh, liquid water coming out? Yeah, that's why. There, as, as we get a little bit more room in the boiler, it's not going to spit quite as bad. I think all that water spitting down onto the boiler just cooled it off, is what really happened here. That's why we don't have as much of a head of steam on anymore. 
Anyway, that's enough of this one. Um, I'll bring up that other one now and see if we can get it going. So this other one, for anyone who's interested, in a, is a Fleischmann 120-2, made in West Germany. That gives you a, a date that it can't be newer than, but it's quite a bit older than that. I would put this into uh, maybe 19... 50s or 60s era um, differences in this one obviously it's got the flywheel and piston mounted off to the side with a steam tube going over to it it has a steam whistle on it which is very neat on top it has the same filler and pressure relief which isn't stuck and that still works that's good on the front of the boiler though, it's got a little bung that you take out when you're filling it and when water starts coming out there, that tells you that you're at your max full point. So you don't have to guess, which is nice. I'll leave that out too. And then the fire pan on this one, on all these Fleischmann ones, used a solid fuel pellets um, in the little tray. Now, I don't have any of those fuel pellets, and quite honestly, I don't know where the hell I'd find them these days. You can probably buy them if you look online somewhere. So, before this video started, I spent a little bit of time and just made myself a little uh, alcohol burning tray. I used some shop towel cut up in there as wicking. Um, it's made out of aluminum from a source of aluminum that I happen to have quite an abundance of. One free with every beer. Um, and then I just sealed the corners up with epoxy. So that should work okay. I'll set that off to the side for the moment. And that spins okay, but I think I'm going to put a little bit of oil on it. There's a couple of places that you oil these things. One is right on this valve face here. Um, just to create a bit of a seal. It doesn't take much, just, you just need a little film of oil on there. Um, and then we'll pull that guy out and just clean off any crud that's on the piston. You see that little groove in there that sort of acts as a piston ring. Put a little bit of oil in there and run that in there too. And again, that oil is both lubrication and also an air seal. And actually, with, with that valve sealed off in the back, I can really feel it's tight. But then when I move it out like that, it moves quite freely. And then I'll also want to put just a little drop of oil onto those two bushing surfaces there. So that guy runs nice and free. I think I'll clean the excess off. Just because. And that should be everything that we need to do to put it into service. Reconnect the push rod, of course. So water in steam locomotives was actually the single largest consumable. You'd think coal or whatever you're burning, but no, you go through a lot more water than you do uh, fuel. Which is why, back in steam engine days on the railroads, the limiting factor between of distance between stations was how much water you could carry. So the tender, which is that part behind the locomotive there, you can see the visible coal on top of it, but... The larger part underneath it was actually a water tank carrying water. So at stations were about every 30-ish miles, I'm going to say, give or take, along the main lines in, uh, in Canada, at least in Western Canada, where there was just straight track and straight running. Um, and... The reason the stations were that distance apart was mainly because they needed a water refilling station. Um, there wasn't necessarily coal refilling at every station along the line. So I'm just going until I get water coming out the front here. 
right like that. You saw that. So now I know this has the maximum reasonable amount of water in the boiler. Let's dry all that up. Put that back on and as it's going down it's going to push a little bit more out the front. I'll put my front bung on and both of them have a little fiber washer as a seal on the front of them. And it's maybe not quite as positive a seal as the o-ring that's in the little pop-off valve there, but it'll do. I heard that go. Set that into the tray. And I almost burned my fingers, so I know it's working. And we'll just let that steam up. I think we're getting close. Again, it's spewing water all over the place out the back there. Oh no. <laughs> we have success. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I wonder if there's enough power on this thing to do any work. You used to be able to get uh, some tooling to, that you could run with this. Come on. No, nope, looks like it's not quite enough to enough power to spin that uh, little motor. But that's. Uh, that's a bit of a mechanical load anyway. But yeah, you used to be able to get, and I mean, you can probably still find them on eBay, uh, machine shop tools like drill presses and grinders and things like that. Uh, the steam whistle doesn't work. But yeah, these uh, you could set up your entire, uh, your entire little miniature machine shop to run off the steam engine. I'm just going to vent the steam out because it's obviously, yeah, we've run out of fire. Well, that was a lot of fun. For me, anyway. Um, hopefully it was nostalgic for some of you. And uh, for those of you who've never seen these before, hope you uh, <laughs> hope you had fun with that and uh, discovered something you may not have seen before. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Comments and questions down below. I'll talk to you later.